Hi, this is Dave Herman with Salt Lake City Fire Department. This is an introduction to the Fire Department Inspection app for 2021. So essentially, when you are ready to go out and do inspections, uh, what you're going to do is look for this app here, the, the red one that says SLC Fire App. It's typically going to be on the very last page of um, apps on your tablet, both front and back seat. And when you launch it, uh, you're going to see this uh, uh, login screen. Uh, the login is going to be the letters STA for station, your station number 1 through 14, and then A, B, or C uh, for your platoon. Uh, the password uh, was provided in training, and if you need the password, um, uh, please feel free to make contact with myself or Evan Sherlock, and we can get that over to you. Uh, but you're going to go ahead and log in. Um, one of the things I recommend is if you uh, are coming on shift um, and you're basically doing inspections for the first time of your set, if you see that the app has been logged in already, uh, what you'll probably want to go ahead and do is hit this logout button in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Um, there have been some rare occasions where folks have not logged out and logged in with their current station on the platoon and they've done inspections for somebody else. You notice also at the very top of the screen there it says 1 alpha uh, that indicates a station 1 a platoon. So that's a place where you can ver validate or verify that. So uh, the way this works out is uh, you're basically going to first and foremost, um, after you verify that you're logged in correctly, uh, go to your district. Uh, the district uh, for inspections are labeled here on the map. So this one right here is going to be Fire uh, uh, Station 1 B Platoon. And basically what you're going to go ahead and do is just drive to your area and uh, look for inspections to knock out as indicated by these pins. <clears throat> um, essentially, if um, you can't see all of the inspections from your station for the district you're inspecting, what you want to do is go ahead and drive out to your inspection district, hit the refresh button in the upper right hand corner of the screen, and uh, what that will do is it will basically load the permits within approximately a one mile radius surrounding your exact location, um, and so you can go ahead and start doing inspections at that point. <clears throat> so uh, these pins, as indicated before, are your inspectable properties, and they are color-coded. Uh, there are three colors. Uh, there's going to be green, yellow, and red. Uh, a green pin means that an inspection has been done within the last 12 months, so it's probably not one that you need to focus on. Yellow indicates that the last inspection was within 12 to 24 months, and anything that's red is going to be older than two years, essentially, two years or more. So it's wise to go ahead and you know focus on the reds and, and the yellows, and of course you don't need to worry about the greens necessarily, unless you just want to go ahead and do a QAP. <clears throat> so step number one in the process is um, find your pin here on the map uh, to go ahead and do your inspection. Um, and what happens, there are a series of buttons here um, to, that represent different parts of the workflow. Step number one is you're going to go ahead and schedule the inspection. I'm going to confirm that I want to go ahead and schedule. And what's going to happen is this pop-up window is going to appear on the right-hand side, uh, basically with a flow chart of the steps in the process. Now, I'd like to um, uh, draw your attention to this timer in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. <clears throat> what the timer does is it basically you know, times uh, the start and end times for your inspection. So the idea is you go in a structure, you, know, you can hit this button right here um, to um, get a sense of how long it's taking to do your inspections. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And in the upper right-hand corner, you'll notice that uh, it's uh, starting to count up with the total inspection time. So step number one of the process is to review the checklists. Uh, the checklists are basically here for your information, for your reference, uh, just for the code enforcement related stuff. Uh, these are kind of out of the box uh, commercial business um, checklist items um, that are uh, um, created by the Fire Prevention Bureau and are kind of generally applied to most businesses. Um, you can either just kind of go through these and look and see if uh, anything is applicable inside of here, or if you want to do the checklist, which you're certainly welcome to, just hit the status right here, and you can see it's really easy to go through and actually hit knock out these checklist items if you're so inclined. You can also do comments over here on the right-hand side of the screen, so if you want to add a comment or add a photo for any of the checklist items, you can certainly do so. When I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and hit the back button. And uh, you'll notice that what happened is once I reviewed the checklist, um, the checklist changed from red to green, uh, indicating I can move on to step number two in the process, which is result the inspection. <clears throat> so I've completed the inspection. Uh, if I want to, I can attach photos of any code violations that I find here in the result inspection area. And what you're going to go ahead and do is just click on photos. I'm going to select photo and camera. I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of my office here, hit done, 
and it has inserted that in there. You can do as many photos as you want to, and this is going to be primarily for code enforcement stuff. This is not for floor plans. That's going to be in a different area, and I'll show you where that is in a moment. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and result this inspection. I'm going to um, choose the status which is most applicable. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and pass it off. <clears throat> now you notice that the end time is not filled out even though the start time is there. Since I set up the timer, what I want to go ahead and do when I'm done with my inspection is go back to the timer. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. <clears throat> and you'll notice that when I go back to result my inspection, uh, the end time is in there as well. Um, I can add my comments in here if I want to. And you notice that we have this thing called recent. So if you see the same comments over and over again, you can hit that recent button and basically it will provide a listing of the comments that you've used previously or have been used previously. So you can just go ahead and insert those pretty quickly. <clears throat> Third step in the process is to review the inspection. Uh, it basically just says, okay, here's the results information. Um, here's, you know, all of the things associated with the checklist. It's just for your information and just for your review. <clears throat> The next two sections are for signatures. Uh, for those who are interested, you can go ahead and get a customer signature, um, and you can get their first and last name. Signatures are not mandatory. I know some inspection staff and some captains like capturing uh, signatures, uh, but they are not required to basically to complete an inspection. Then you're going to do final submit at the very last step. Are you sure you want to submit? I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And what this is telling me is that the inspection result will be submitted in the background. So in other words, it's basically sending the information from the inspection back to the mothership and uh, everything is going to be updated in just a moment. Now what will happen in just a second is this pin will turn from uh, red to green. It looks like it just did that. And uh, that's how you'll know the inspection has been done. Uh, that can take up to a minute. And so, yeah, if you don't see a change immediately, um, you don't need to worry about it. I can show you where you can validate uh, the inspection in just a moment. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at the contacts. In this case, there are no contacts for this particular record. So I'm going to go ahead and add one. And a phone number. and an email. Um, you can add as many contacts as you want inside of here. And incidentally, um, uh, if dispatch is not able to find a contact for you, uh, you can uh, open up the inspection app for your current location and get that pretty easily. Um, let's go over to the QAP side of things. Uh, QAP, as you know, basically stands for Quick Access Preplan. And these are kind of the common things that the inspection committee recommends for collecting uh, during an inspection process. So I'm just going to add a couple of these. And we'll go ahead and move on. I hit the Submit Custom Forms at the bottom, and that has been done. Now here is the, uh, in the History tab, this basically gives an indication of the history of inspections at a particular location. So this is, um, today's date is Friday, August 20th, and you'll notice that the inspection that I submitted just a moment ago, uh, it's in this list. Um, so basically that's how you can validate that your inspection made it back to the Acela mothership, is by going into the inspection history, and you can actually see that there. This might be useful if you, um, you know, go into a structure and you have some corrections for a business owner. If you look at the history, you may see that you know, the previous crew um, did corrections required, or maybe the year before that they did corrections required. So under that circumstance, it may give you an indication that you may want to refer uh, the inspection to the Fire Prevention Bureau based upon code violation uh, by doing a fail 126, um, if you see a lot of corrections in the past. Next thing to bring your attention is report. Uh, the report is useful um, for uh, some building owners, some business owners. Uh, they, they might have you know, uh, insurance requirements where they need to submit their inspection report showing a pass, or they may have some sort of other regulatory thing. Um, so this is what it looks like. You can send it to the customer by hitting this arrow and piece of paper in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And this particular device uh, does not have mail on it. Um, so basically, um, what I would normally see or what you'll see on your tablet is, you know, a mail option, you hit mail. Um, if you put a contact email address in the contact section on the left, it will automatically populate that contact and say, hey, do you want to send it to this individual? Yes or no. If not, you'll be able to just go ahead and add whatever email address you want. 
Uh, documents are essentially anything attached to a record. So these uh, include the signatures from previously, and you'll notice that basically the photo that I uploaded is also uh, in documents. And um, you can add additional documents if you want, although I think that most people don't have that operational need. So the final step in the process is once you've uh, collected all of this information, uh, you'll want to go ahead and send the QAP to dispatch. By hitting send QAP to dispatch, what you're essentially doing is you're sending the contacts and quick access pre-plan stuff uh, to dispatch so they can be loaded into CAD for this particular address. And I'm going to go ahead and do that so I can demonstrate what this looks like. It basically brings up a um, jot form. It's a kind of a technology that we use for a lot of different stuff in the fire, fire department. And you'll notice that what it did is it basically scraped the information from my inspection and uh, basically it plugged it into um, the, um, the stuff here. And so basically if you want, um, you can put your email address inside of here if you'd like to receive a copy of this report. Um, and then down at the bottom, um, some crews will actually um, add additional notes um, or they'll actually find a floor plan of the building um, that they can go ahead and take a picture of. Uh, basically to take a picture of a floor plan or anything else that you want for the quick access pre-plan, uh, you're going to go ahead and take a photo or a video. You can add as many photos as you want. Um, and then when you're done, simply hit the submit button. Uh, this will go to dispatch who will take your pre-plan, add it to the address so that when you're en route to a call, um, in vMobile or MDT, you'll basically look at the hazards section and you'll basically see a link to your pre-plan there. So that's pretty much it as far as the inspection app goes. Um, if you have any questions regarding this, uh, you may give me a call, 801-440-9111. Uh, uh, if you have any problems with the inspection app or need anything else, uh, please email support at slcfire.tech. Uh, thanks so much for your time.